Good morning, church. Continue to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness as we reflect on God's track record in our lives. He is the beat in this once still heart. He is the breath in this once lifeless being. He is the life in these once dry bones. He is our testimony. Tell your neighbor, he is my testimony. He is my testimony. You see, once we forget where we're coming from, we're lost. Because the beginning of success is deeper than the success itself. Tell your neighbor, God is my testimony. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Good morning, church. My name is Angela, and I'm from America. I pray today that our hearts would be open to God's word, God's faith, and God's spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. In every generation, from the time of Christ until now, a new wave of persecution has swept across the shores of Christianity. Take your mind back to the apostles of old. Matthew, Peter, Stephen, John, and Paul, they were beheaded crucified upside down, dropped in boiling oil, stoned to death, and even skinned alive. They were disciples of Christ, men of credibility who paid the supreme price to bring the gospel to us. Today, the wave of persecution still continues, but where it's coming from may not be where you think. And this will lead us to the title of today's message, The New Wave of Persecution. Tell your neighbor. Let me speak from experience. I first came to the Synagogue Church of All Nations with a body riddled with disability and an expiry date over my head. This is my x-ray. These are my bones. This is my body. This is what the devil tried to use to destroy me. You can see the curve and the, the twisting. At the, at the age of 14, my bones began twisting and they wouldn't stop. At this point, I was under the care of the government. They were taking care of my treatment and my therapy, along with others like me who were wheelchair bound and bedridden. Those in the US, Europe, they'll, they'll understand what I'm talking about. You see, at, at, after six years of therapy and treatment, the doctors called me and said there was nothing more they could do for me. My bones continued to twist. There was nothing they could do to stop them from continuing to twist. And they couldn't reverse the damage and they couldn't even reduce my excruciating pain. They then told me that my bones had begun crushing my organs and I would soon be on a wheelchair. And after my organs started failing one after the other, I would be bedridden before I came to an untimely death. I remember counting the remaining years they gave me on my two hands. But one day, a visitor brought a video from this church, the Synagogue Church of All Nations, to my local church in California. And at that moment, death died and life began for me. You see, when I started by saying, he is my testimony, I want you to understand what I mean. Jesus is my testimony. The scars are still there. I don't know if the cameraman can come. The trace is still on my body. I want you to see God's track record in my life. If you turn, you can see the scar. You can see what has happened. Some of you may have looked at me in the past and said, something's just not right but something's just perfect. You see, 
I have outlived my expiry date by 11 years and counting. <laughs> All by the grace of the God of Prophet TV Joshua. I'll never forget that Wednesday service in California. As I watched the videos, I saw the name of Jesus restore life to those with deadly diseases, HIV, AIDS, cancer, to those crippled, to those blind and deaf. I saw that the liberation of man is not something just hoped for or a mere wish after all. Jesus Christ delivered and still delivers man physically from disease, hunger, and want. Jesus delivers man mentally from being ruled by the senses and brings his spirit. The child of God does not have to be lorded over by Satan, for Jesus delivers the man spiritually from Satan's bonds. As I watch testimony after testimony unfold before my eyes, I then trace their steps to the synagogue church of all nations. As prophet TB Joshua prayed for me, what the devil started in my life came to a full stop. I was healed, I was whole, I was free. You can imagine with such joy, I ran to share my testimony with everyone I could find. Surprisingly, I kept hearing two questions from America. Why did you go to Nigeria for prayer? And from Nigeria, why did you go see TB Joshua? Hmm. Why Nigeria? Why Prophet TB Joshua? Because America has everything for me. Everything but one thing. And that one thing I found in the life of Prophet TB Joshua, I found God, real, alive, and at work. Why Nigeria? Why Prophet TB Joshua? Because God confirms the words of his servants by performing them, by accompanying them, and by establishing them. You see, when God's word on our lips is the same as it was in the master's lips, the very life of God in those words is capable of changing situations. I was changed. But many people, church people, kept asking me why. Why should the lost be found? Why should the sick be healed? Why should the dead be recovered from the grave? Because it didn't happen in your church, because it didn't happen in your ministry, and because it didn't happen in your country does not mean it should not happen. But this, this is the new wave of persecution. Body of Christ, we persecute ourselves. Why will others not behead us? We call ourselves names. Why will others not call us devils? We disbelieve ourselves. Why will others not pursue us to death? It is written, in Matthew 1, verse 23, that Mary would give birth to a child and his name would be Emmanuel, meaning God with us. God with who? With us. We were all one in the beginning. In the beginning when God said, be fruitful and multiply, but we reversed that equation. Yes, we did. Where God said multiply, we said divide. Divide your church according to color. Divide according to denomination. Divide according to mentor or spiritual father. Divide according to political belief. But it is written again in Matthew 18, verse 20, that where two, sorry, one, two, where two or three, where two or three, are gathered together in my name. There I am in their midst. You see, it wasn't just one disciple Jesus revealed himself to on the Mount of Transfiguration. 
It wasn't just one disciple. Jesus said, would be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. It wasn't just one disciple in the hall when the storm came. It was a coming together, a forming of relationship when Pentecost fell. But now, I cannot relate with you. You two, find your way. And you cannot relate with me, yeah? Find your way. What is the position of Jesus then? Where is Jesus in our midst? I'm sorry, but where, where is our midst? Look at this. If pastors and priests cannot walk together as one, how will their members walk together? How many of us are members of a church, a congregation, or a fellowship? You are a member of a church. Let me see your hand. How many of us are members of churches? Then this question is about you. So now, if pastors and prophets cannot walk together as one, how will their members walk together? If bishops and cardinals cannot walk together as one, how will their members walk together? And if we don't walk together, how will we accomplish the mission of the gospel? Ask your neighbor. If we do not walk together, how will we accomplish the mission of the gospel? Thank you. The mission of the gospel is not just in word alone, human eloquence, excellent in speaking, but in the mighty power in the mighty energy of the Holy Spirit, converting, in quickening, enlightening, and sanctifying all believers. Yes, the purpose of the gospel is to enable believers to take their place in the believer's authority, to preach the gospel, heal the sick, and deliver and save the lost. But generations continue to wander still lost and unsure of where to turn because of what we're doing and saying against one another. But, come to think of it, we do not seem to mind the faith of the president or the wealthy before we wine and dine with them, while we keep persecuting ourselves and causing division in the body of Christ. Let me say that again. We do not mind the faith of the president or the wealthy and are happy to wine and dine with them, while we keep persecuting our own selves and causing division in our own body. Hmm. This is the new wave of persecution. I need to tell you what else I found in my local church that day. You see, on a table in the lobby, before we ever reached the videos, was a popular American magazine. It had a story on the prophet, so I read it. I remember it was the very first time I heard the name Prophet T.B. Joshua and the Synagogue Church of All Nations. And at the end, a prominent figure in American Christianity advised the readers, be careful, don't go there. It's a sin to attend a different fellowship. Watch out for that pastor. If care is not taken, even the elect will be deceived. We must rise up against him. And many in the church developed fear and hatred for a person they'd never met and a church they'd never attended because of what they read on the pages of a magazine. Many allowed others to inspire them with words contrary to God's word and to incite them against their fellow brother. And the more they rebuked, bound and loosed, the more divided they became. And the further away they got from Jesus' prayer in John 17. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of John 17 and read the entire scripture, the entire prayer. But this morning, we are going to read out of it. John 17, 
We'll take our reading from verse one. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. Two, for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Three, now this is eternal life. Tell your neighbor, now this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Verse six, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Say, this is me. Say, this is me. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. 21, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. 23, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. The gospel of Christ unites us as one, but our own gospel today divides us to pieces because the names of our churches are different. Take note, the names are only symbolic. The Synagogue Church of All Nations, United Methodist, are merely symbolic. Jesus is the head of the church, the hope of glory. The Pentecostal church, the Presbyterian church, are merely symbolic. Jesus is the head of the church, the hope of glory. What the Bible stands for is unity, but the one we preach today calls for division. If there is disunity among the followers, tell me what will happen among others. We will expect worse, and we are seeing worse as the number of those killed through persecution rises moment by moment. And yet some in the church continue shouting, but I am for Paul, and others keep yelling, but I am for Peter. Ask God who Paul is and who Peter is. For though the body of man is made up of different parts, its workings are informed by the spirit of one purpose. And so there is no division in the body, but each of its members have the same concern for one another. Now tell me, what is the greatest member of the human body? The head? The mouth? Okay, now tell me the least member of the human body. The chin? The toe? Yes, this is my little toe. You can't see it, I've covered it. Why? Because it's so insignificant, so small, so weak, so powerless and pointless. I've often asked myself, why do I need little toes? You ever ask yourself that question? Why do I need that little toe? But just let the body know you have an issue with your toe. Let the body know there's a problem. Just give it a, hey, 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 my toe, oh, 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 oh. ah, I hit my toe. My toe, I think it's, come up. oh, I think it's a bleeding. Oh, I think, uh, Asher, can you help me? Please take me to the hospital, my toe is bleeding. I think I need to sew it back on. Oh, are you okay? Are you okay? What happened? I had a problem with my toe. Don't worry, it was a crisis. But this is the smallest member of my body. 
is the weakest member of my body, but every member was engaged for its rescue. <laughs> this is the least member of my body, but every member was concerned for its recovery. Such is to be the body of Christ. Tell your neighbor. Such is to be the body of Christ. This actually reminds me of the incident that happened here in the synagogue church of all nations. Over 100 people were killed from different nations. I followed them to the court. But surprisingly, it was other religions, for example, Muslims and others, who were coming to the court in support. It was kings and queens who were coming to the court in support. Not a single Christian body turned up. I personally received the phone calls in the office from the Sultan of Sokoto and the head of the Muslim community and other emirs and Islamic leaders registering their concern and their support. But not a call came from Christian leaders here. How? Why? We persecute ourselves. Why will others not persecute us? Why will others not behead us? Why will others not pursue us? But when the same thing happened in Saudi Arabia, we saw solidarity from different Christian bodies in Nigeria here. Where is our conscience? Remember Romans 9 verse 1, our conscience is the communication point or contact point for the Holy Spirit. Oh, my toe. Tell your neighbor, oh, my toe. Let someone say, oh, my toe. Such is to be the body of Christ. But there's been a great mix up in the church that has affected our witness, our preaching, our prayers, and our worship. This pastor can't visit that pastor because of what they preach from their pulpits. A member of this church can't visit a member of that church because of the doctrine they follow. I mean, what their pastors are telling them. But the gospel of Jesus Christ cuts across doctrine, across denomination, and across ideology. This is the gospel we have been entrusted with from those who gave their very lives that we might have it. But we continue to take their lives again and again every time we speak against our sister, condemn another ministry, and fight our fellow man. There's one thing we must know. Those who fight against God and his prophets have deceived themselves and are justly given up to delusions. The enemies of God and his church when they fancy themselves ready to triumph, will find themselves conquered and triumphed over. Let us be very careful. It is possible to grow up in a church, learn all the rights, and not know God at all. You can read your New Testament and never find Christ. You can head a religious body, be a senior pastor, and not know God at all. Because Christianity stands and falls on Jesus Christ, on the illumination of the Holy Spirit. According to 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no one can say Jesus is Lord without the help of the Holy Spirit. This means you only know Jesus as far as the Holy Spirit is pleased to reveal him to you. But when what you're doing, what you're saying, is not pleasing him, how then will the Spirit of God reveal Christ to you? The Word of God is the tool, the instrument in the hands of the Holy Spirit to save you, change you, bless you, make you one with a difference, and cause you to make a difference. 
But how many? Because the word does not prevail, do not make a difference. For many centuries, things have been going on the same way because of the chief priests and scribes who follow. How sad it is to live in an age of Sabbaths and sacraments, prayers and sermons in vain. And the wave of persecution continues to sweep our body away. Prophet T.B. Joshua made a difference in my life. I was never asked what church I attended before he prayed for me. I was never asked what denomination I belonged to before he gave his time, his years, to mentor me. But you said he's the one I should watch out for? In Acts chapter 9, when Ananias was called by the Lord to look for Saul, he didn't first ask Saul for a certificate of his conversion before he laid hands on him. He simply acted in obedience to God. In Acts chapter 10, when Peter was called to Cornelius' house, he didn't first ask for a letter of approval from the leaders to visit a Gentile. He simply went in obedience to God. As Peter spoke God's word, the Holy Spirit fell on the hearers. God bore witness to Peter's words. God owned Peter's words, and Peter succeeded in carrying them along to Christ by the help of the Holy Spirit. This same Peter was later crucified for his obedience to the gospel. Jesus had earlier eulogized Peter while he was still alive. He said, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus was telling Peter that the persecution he was to suffer would be a tonic to the anointing. Here we are today, the church, after many centuries, alive and still growing. Persecution is a tonic to the anointing. Tell your neighbor. Hatred is a tonic to the anointing. Chastisement is a tonic to the anointing. People of God, they never asked for approval from their leaders before they acted in obedience to God. Why? Because knowledge is not the key. Obedience is. Position is not the key. Power is not the key. Popularity is not the key. Time in the pulpit is not even the key. Obedience is. I am whole today because of obedience to God's word. People of God, body of Christ, what we are seeing happening around the world, Christian persecution, beheading of Christians, chastisements, these are calls for unity. I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm synagogue, I'm redeemed, I'm winners, are mere names. Let us all come together. We are hands of the Father. We are joined hands with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are hands of the Father. Of the
We are one in Jesus' name. Amen. Body of Christ, persecution is a tonic to the anointing. Ask Gamaliel in Acts chapter 5, and he will tell you what he said in the midst of great persecution of the apostles of old. He said, leave these men alone, let them go. If their activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you cannot stop these men. You will find yourself only fighting against God. We have seen that evidence. You are on the feet today. Think of how much you persecuted in the past what we are enjoying today. Think of how much you hated in the past what we are seeing. Turn off that channel. I don't want to see that man over my dead body. What you persecuted, your sons and daughters are beneficiaries of. I am one of the beneficiaries of what you hated, what you persecuted, what you falsely imprisoned. I am whole today because I listened to my conscience. Tell your neighbor, listen to your conscience. Listen to your conscience. Brothers and sisters, what we see happening around the world is a call for unity. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, the hope of glory. Right now, examine your life in the light of God's words. Look at your words. Look at your hands. If you find yourself still grasping the weapons of persecution, this is your opportunity to lay them down. Paul, after persecuting the church, joined himself to them. This unprecedented, revolutionary story of reconciliation is still being written. Don't rejoice that you bear a Christian title or position. Rejoice that your name is written into this story. Where hostilities are destroyed, where enemies become friends, where a brood of vipers becomes a seed of saints, and where the lion dwells with the lamb. It's one thought. Christ and the Word are one. The Word and Spirit are inseparable. Such is to be the body of Christ, one and inseparable. I pray that before the coming of Christ, true believers would see reason to be unified in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ in you is the hope of glory. You are my temple, and I will dwell in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. I will work in you. I will be your God, and you shall. Christ in you, Christ in you, is the hope of glory. You are my temple, I will dwell in you. Christ in you, Christ in you, is the hope. all over the world. I mean those under the influence of this telecast. I believe you are healed by this word. I believe you are saved by this word. 
I believe you are delivered by this word. I believe you are set free by this word. In Jesus' name, rejoice.